say it may cost a lot of money to obviously renovate a place, but it costs much more money to run it. What are the what are the costs of keeping Stratford Hall alive? And also, how do you generate your revenues? What sorts of activities? I think that that would be quite interesting to to know for other other people who want to do the same with such a place, similar places. Yeah. So our running costs um, are about eleven thousand pounds a month. Um, that is going to significantly increase this year because of our electricity bills. So okay. our our energy bills. Uh, have gone from £20,000 two years ago to 60000 this year. So we've had a really massive uh, increase in, yeah, in enormous. energy bills. Yeah. Uh, so we're really looking at what we can do in terms of improving energy efficiency to try and get that down, you know, get our use down as much as we can. Yeah. So the running costs are about, yeah, kind of 11, 12 a month and at 12K a month. And m- we've got various income streams and, and I think that's been quite important um, particularly during COVID, you know, when, when one income stream, which was room high, just sort of stopped overnight. Yeah. Um, we've got a lot of tenanted space. So we've got a co-working space in the back of the building, an artist studio and um, the parliamentary office as well. So our local MP is based here. Um, and although we, you know, we did agree some sort of rent holidays and things during COVID, but that's a, a regular steady source of income that comes in every month. So that's really important just to be able to rely on that, mm-hmm. you know, and know that that's coming in. Um, we generate increasingly a lot of money from room hire. Yeah. Um, and obviously the ballroom has been really important in, in sort of bigger packages like weddings and private parties. And then we do organize our own events and activities. So um, we're set up for cinema tonight. You know, we've got a community cinema we run, live That's music nights. That's all the seats there. That's all the seats. Yeah, yeah. We're showing the um, David Barry uh, documentary tonight. Um, and then we, so we run, com- you know, we run community events, but, but, you know, we try to do everything um, for it to be affordable and accessible. So, you know, that means kind of keep keeping the prices as low as we can. So we don't make huge profits on um, mm-hmm. anything we do. And we are, uh, a lot of our community work and our outreach is reliant on grant funding. Okay. Um, so we've got a kind of a stripped down business model, which is running the building um, hiring out the rooms, yeah. you know, the very minimum that we can do, um, that we can kind of do sustainably. And then a lot of the extra work that we'd like to do that, that sort of outreach, we, we have to rely on grant funding for that. So if you didn't have the grant funding, would you be able to stay alive? We would just about, yeah, we would, but we probably wouldn't be having the community impact we have. Yeah. Yeah. We would be providing a community space. We would still be here. People could still use the building. We would still be looking after the building. So, you know, which really was the aim of, you know, the friends when we, when we started. So yeah. we would still be meeting our objectives as an organization. But I think a lot of what we do now, the extra impact we have as an, as an organization, um, we do re- rely on sort of funding for that. Yeah. That's quite important. Yeah. And I, I mean, I think, that's yeah this is a it's almost like a it's a key consideration around and it for any kind of trading business that then also obviously has a strong community purpose there is an element where you know we want to increase our trading income to cover our operating costs because you know we know that grants and funding is is quite it's an it's quite an uncertain kind of yeah. space to work in and it and and so you know we know that if we can increase our trading income then we can provide continuity and sustainability and, and know that we can run the building and i think still deliver really key aspects of providing affordable workspace for local people putting on events um but the grants and that funding just allows us to extend our reach and impact and give us, I suppose, a bit more um, opportunity to to try things out, I think. Can you give some examples? Well, I think think probably a good example, well, I mean, Kate, you might come in on other things, but I think one of the things that when when we came in quite early on was um, we, and it's still going now, is this Wellbeing Tuesdays. So we we put on a series of well-being activities, yoga, chair aerobics, Pilates. But the idea is it was 
it was always going to be a very uh, affordable offer. So we do we wanted to make it incredibly accessible. Anyone could come in and, and uh, par- participate in the activities, yeah. um, and the cost shouldn't be a, ba- a barrier. But we had to kind of work out the model of how we were going to do that because obviously we have to bring in providers to deliver the classes, and obviously you know they need to secure how you know they need to generate uh, a livelihood so we have to pay the uh, the providers and so we're just like finding the right model which means we can support local uh, well-being providers provide an affordable mm-hmm. um uh, offer and we were able to secure a few grants early on to just kind of make that model work and that was sort of five years ago and i and it's i, I think that was also probably the first instance of where we were able to keep the door open, front door open in it throughout that day because there was classes coming in. People could just come in. We had like a community cafe, yeah. you know, pretty low-fi cafe. But the idea of just allowing and that, and, and that was sort of the start of, of, of basically of trying to get that real hub feel where people can come in and interact with yeah. um, the activities, get advice, be a place for information, advice and 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 in contact and, and meet people um and yeah i think that we've now extended that and yeah i don't know if you um, you probably <laughs> no i think that's a good idea. i mean i think lots of lots of the activities we've done we we start with a bit of grant funding to kind of test them um i mean like this morning we've had a cookery class running um with about i think 25 people came um just affordable which we're trying to um, promote slow cookers and you know thinking about we get a lot of people that come in for help with energy bills at the moment so we're trying to support people to learn how to cook with slow cookers um, and you know when these things are up and running you, you're often able to find a way of running them without funding so once something gets a bit of momentum and maybe people are willing to make donations to take part and then volunteers get involved and they start yeah. taking over some of the running of it um, then, you, you know, we, it's often possible for us to afford to run those things without grant funding, but usually that initial trying it out um, and maybe, you know, investing in a bit of equipment or um, marketing costs, those kind of things, just having a bit of grant funding takes the risk off us and means that we can try it out and then think about how to run it sustainably. That's interesting. I know in our, in our, we, we discovered the air fryer as a replacement of the yeah. oven. Uh, it's much faster and it uh, doesn't consume as much electricity than a, as an oven. So if you want to just roast some potatoes and with something else, then there's enough room for that for a family of four kids, um, yeah. two kids and two adults. Yeah, and I, I think that's been a big development. I think being, I think co-locating activities. So basically, for me, I think that's a really, I think that's. A really valuable offer where you know you might come in to do a <coughs> yoga class but then you can chat to someone from you switch about your energy bills yeah. and uh and then go and meet someone um and just have a brew and and the idea that it because it they're all, you, you you're not saying right you've got to go, we're, we're doing this thing you need advice about this and you've mm. got to go in and it's that idea that you it it's more informal and casual and it allows I don't know for me it makes it more accessible and yeah. and less stigma about interacting with certain things um I know <laughs> mainly because my mum's a volunteer and she's involved but we now do an English as a foreign language class and that's become really popular but it happens in you know people come there but then they might go and do yoga and then and it's just that that's what you get with a hub. It's that idea that you, yeah. people can interact with different parts of, of 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 what we do, and it. But it doesn't have to be structured and formal, which I think can put people off. I like. Well, obviously, I, I live in Stratford, and we come here very often with family and friends, and it's it's really nice to well to come with friends and just bump onto a few a few other people. We partially no not so well or neighbors um yeah it's it's great to all meet here and uh obviously it's for mainly for parties and big events that we come but um yeah there's there's other smaller events that, that are great we're going to have the theater stressed uh in in a few weeks 
and there's loads of data I want to ask John about. And there's one data I'm very interested in is how when you go to a venue, then uh, it benefits also going to a venue or renovating a venue benefits the local businesses around the venue. Have you got any stats of maybe around oh. Stratford? Yeah, yeah. Probably not about Stratford Hall, yeah. but for every pound that spends in Stratford Hall, for Stratford Hall, how much does the like uh, do the small businesses or surrounding yeah. businesses get and I presume I know you're already engaging with a lot of small businesses either inviting them in or suggesting people who come to a certain event to go for example the pizzeria there big house for uh, 32 mm. uh, yeah have you got what what's your data <laughs> so we we haven't done that piece of work looking at that local economic impact in in monetary terms um yeah. it's actually something i emailed someone about yesterday asking okay. them if they could help us do it uh so it is that would be really interesting i think there are sort of general um acknowledged uh figures about you know a local business is it one pound one pound invested is you know three yeah. pounds in the local area or that you know but yeah. but what we haven't looked at that in detail um what we do know are things like you know the number of small businesses that have been supported through our co-working space mm -hmm. or the number of organizations that have used um our rooms and, and have had access to community space so we we were getting much better at reporting on that on an annual basis yeah. so we can say you know these are the number of organizations that have benefited from us being here um we've got a sustainable procurement policy so we do try to focus on supporting local businesses and you know favoring local businesses and local contractors just to try and ensure that you know our money is invested locally and uh, you know and it's actually something quite often funders ask for so funders will ask you know how many of your staff live in your local area how many of your board you know so there is a sort of an interest from funders and that kind of thing um but i think that very detailed economic yeah. piece of work isn't something we've quite done yet what's been interesting is when the when we initially took on the hall there wasn't really a particularly i would say big nighttime economy in stretford mm -hmm. um just because of the way the mall um was run at that time it was predominantly a retail offer yeah and so the big change over the last five years has been um diver diversity in uh the offer in Stretford. So, you know, there's now way more pubs, bars, restaurants than there were at the beginning. So I think it's been interesting because I think one of the things that we anticipated here at the beginning was that we were going to ha have to, we felt the time that we were going to be a key driver in the nighttime economy because there w it wasn't, didn't seem to be anything else mm -hmm. going on. And I think it was when we started thinking, oh, maybe we should have a dedicated bar or a dedicated cafe in the space, that nighttime offer. But I think what's been really interesting is that's happened. And, you know, I don't, I don't obviously it's difficult to attribute that the hall helped stimulate, but I'm sure it was helpful. Yeah. And I think, but I also think it's quite a, interesting that I think it means that we can sort of, Part, we can be part of a now of a wider nighttime economy mm -hmm. where we put on an event here and people might, you know, so tonight we've got a hundred people coming for cinema, maybe a few more. And I'm sure, you know, that will then, you know, it's not going to go on late, but then people will go elsewhere or might get some food before or, yeah. so it's actually, I think, you know, you being a, having a nighttime or an evening offer, then hopefully helps. And I think for us, we, you know, it's, it's great because it is, it, again, it sort of complements. So people will see what we've got on and think, oh, actually, I'll, we'll come to this because actually we can go somewhere else afterwards. And, um, and, you know, it means that people locally have got somewhere on their doorstep rather than going to town or going to Chalton. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So a big river way between Stratford and Chalton. Yeah. <laughs> but so I think that's been an interesting change because I think initially we're like, okay, the hall is going to, there's going to be a lot of, you know, we really need to like seize the nighttime offer because we're going to be the main nighttime kind of potentially pro proposition in Stratford. Because is it your, your intent? Well, I think we're more relaxed about it now because we, you know, we we can 
we can plan about what's best within, you know, I, I, I mean, I think the main thing is we were very, we did quite a lot of work around, should we open like a cafe in the hall? We did some feasibility around that. And there was okay. always going to be restrictions, limitations. And, but obviously there was at that time, we did quite a lot of consultation and there wasn't a huge kind of offer. And, yeah. and it, since then we've had Friends of Victoria Park with the cafe in the park, Uplift, Stratford Food Hall, Head, <laughs> The Hive, you know, all these places that are now here and... Um, yeah, I, I think. But I was going to say that I think one of our, you know, our, one of our objectives is to respond to community need. Mm -hmm. You know, that was that's kind yeah. of that's in our ter, you know terms of sort of existence is that we we are aiming to provide what the community needs in this area. And yes. um, the fact that we're able to kind of respond and and um, you know change those objectives slightly. So it's like we're well, okay. Well, maybe you know. That Stratford doesn't need a cafe at the moment. It doesn't need nighttime because that's being done elsewhere. But actually, what we're doing is, um, you know, serving as a community hub and helping people with, you know, access fuel support and you know, and that's what's kind of needed and that's what that's how we're sort of responding. So I think having that flexibility to be able to sort of say, okay, let's you know, we do quite a lot of consultation. We're always sort of like asking people what they want to see and what they'd like to be going on in the building and um, constantly doing that, you know, and that's important from from a grant rate, a fundraising point of view because a, a funder would ask, well, how do you know it's needed? How do you know that it's, the local community wants it? Yeah. Um, but also just because that's what we're here for really is just to, you know, to provide what is needed. I was just going to, sorry, just yeah, to jump on. back a bit, I was just going to say about the, the investment. I think the hall has very definitely had a, a big in, um, impact on investment because when the Stratford secured future high streets funding, um, 19 million for the, mm. the first phase of the redevelopment and the renovation of the hall and the asset, the asset transfer was, was featured in that bid, um, as an example of the fact that, you know, the community were leading development already in Stratford. And, you know, we wrote a letter, letter of support with that, with that bid that went in. And I do think that the success of that and the reason that, you know, that funding was secured in part was because of all the, you know, not just here, there's other, other examples of community businesses that were really successful, like the SIP Club and, yeah. you know, but yeah. the fact that all of those, the community itself was, was you know, trying to kind of look at solutions and, and yeah, develop, I think really strengthened that bid. So I think we probably did have quite a direct link to that extra funding coming into the town centre. That's quite interesting. Do you know if the renovation of the mall, well, it, it started to happen just after the hall was renovated? When the hall was renovated, before, has it always been on the plans? And uh, because maybe it was also a case to renovate the mall as well and all the places around. Do you, presumably the, the hall has had some. Um, has given more of a uh, an incentive for the mall to be renovated. Maybe I don't know. Uh, do you know about this? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it was the, the 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 asset transfer of the hall. Yeah. In one of the much earlier versions of the Stratford Master Plan, was was cited as a, a, a step in that okay. redevelopment. So that was seen as. Um, one of the early things that they were going to do to sort of revive the town centre was this asset transfer of the hall. So I think it was just, it's part of that ongoing work. You know, I think they looked at all the local assets and said, okay, well, how are we, how can we renovate those or how can we redevelop them? Um, or, or, you know, just make, make use of them. And I think the handover of the hall was identified quite early on as a first step in that much wider, wider phase of redevelopment. Yeah, I mean, I think... I mean, I think it's, it's obviously always difficult to know. I mean, there's so many, I think so many things at play, but obviously Stretford is, has had a lot of kind of top-down master planning work that then hasn't kind of got anywhere to yeah. a degree. I mean, it's maybe a bit harsh, but it, it you know, there's been quite a lot of um, consultation and engagement to say, look, we know that the, town centre in Stretford is, you know, it's, there's parts of it that don't work in, you know, and can't, it could be mu a much better, more livable place. Mm -hmm. um, and I think, obviously, the big, 
the big change has been bringing them all into the master plan with the own with the traffic council and Bruntwood um, relationship, where they because essentially it was in private ownership. And so it's very difficult to master plan an area where, I mean, I don't know a percentage, but it's got to be, it's a big chunk of your town centre is in private ownership. And it was difficult to engage with, with them all. So like now is, you know, the opportunity is that that's plugged in. Yeah. So I think from our point of view, it's like there's, there's a lot of potential to do something quite bold. And I think because you've, because the mall is obviously a key part now of the, the master plan. Um, and I think for us, it's just now like being, we want to kind of feed into that because we feel like we, obviously we don't speak for the whole community, but we do do a lot of work with, with, with the community mm -hmm. and we want to kind of try and help feed in what the community actually wants to see with the master plan.